Welcome back to another episode. My name is Sophie and I give top tips on everything tech and lifestyle. Today I'm going to be going into what I would do if I had to learn how to code all over again. My coding journey spans about eight years. I was exposed to coding when I was in high school and then I did four years for my undergrad and I've been in industry as a professional software engineer in finance for about two and a half years now. So I want to share my beads of wisdom with you all and kind of hopefully save you a lot of time and answer some of your questions as beginners going into coding. So without further ado, let's get started. When learning how to code, regardless of which route you take, self-taught, coding boot camp, four-year degree, I like to break it down into three main concepts that I think are very important. Number one is to learn by doing. Number two is to learn how to think. And number three is to learn how to stay curious. And I'll go into each one of these and break down what each of them mean. But I think that they're incredibly important for a variety of reasons. And had I had this roadmap when I was learning how to code, I think that I would have saved myself a lot of frustration. I know that when you're learning how to code, it can be a little bit confusing and you think that you have to learn everything all at once and that's overwhelming. So do yourself a favor and choose one language. A really great way of doing this is maybe you have something that you're interested in, a particular use case. For example, you've always wanted to build out a website. Great languages for websites happen to be HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So maybe you decide that you're going to pick one of those languages as your first programming language. And as you learn how to build out this website, as you learn this language, you will also start to learn programming concepts, which can then later be applied to a variety of different languages. If you don't have a use case that you're that interested in, I think that a great default starting language is Python just because you can really hit the ground running with this language. It's simple syntax. It's a very powerful language so you can still do a good deal with it. And so keep this in mind. If you have a use case, look into what languages are best suited for that use case. And if not, default to Python because I don't think you can really go wrong with learning that as your first language. <laughs> Side projects. The number one mistake I made when I was learning how to code was thinking that I could learn by simply watching a tutorial or by watching a professor solve a problem or a question and not actually applying what I was learning. Let me save you the time and tell you right now, you're not going to learn how to code by watching tutorials and by watching others code. You have to get your hands dirty and actually do it yourself. Pick interesting projects that solve real world problems and then you can work your way up to using really cool APIs. Lots of big tech companies have great application programming interfaces that allow you to do some pretty neat things. And this is really what got me super, super interested in programming was the practicality and the ability to solve these real world problems. So pick side projects that have real world application. And as you are going through tutorials, as you are in class, as you're learning, make sure that you also are applying that knowledge and really building out some great side projects. Free Code Camp has a lot of great resources for side projects that will walk you through step by step the entire process. Another thing that I wanted to mention is I know that setting up your environment can be a little bit cumbersome and sometimes intimidating, especially for beginners. And a really great thing about Python is that you can go online, type in repl.it, and it is a free code editor for Python so you don't have to go through the pain of downloading something and then figuring out how to install it, figuring out how to start a project, all that craziness. You can just go ahead and directly start. Think like a programmer. Programmers have a very unique way of thinking. We have to solve some of the world's hardest problems and in order to do that, it takes a lot of grit, a lot of hard work, a lot of consistency, and it also takes 
attacking a problem from a variety of different perspectives. If this doesn't work, then I'm going to try this. Let me try this to see if this works. And this is a never ending cycle throughout your programming, software engineer, computer science, tech career. This ability to critically think is such an important skill that Steve Jobs even said he thinks everybody in the United States at one point in their life should learn how to code simply because it teaches you how to think. I know you're probably thinking to yourself, I don't need to know how to code to solve random things in my life or to lead a happy, healthy, productive, successful life. And you're right. You're absolutely right. But hear me out. You would be surprised as to how many questions I get on a day-to-day -day basis. This is outside of tech. Somebody will ask me a question and they, they genuinely cannot figure it out and I'm able to figure it out in less than a minute. Now, I'm not like flexing and trying to brag like, oh, I'm so smart. No, 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 no. I'm so used to thinking about different ways to try things that a lot of the time it bleeds over into every aspect of my life. And so my default is let's try a hundred ways until we get it to work or until we figure it out versus i tried twice and i couldn't figure it out so let me ask for help keep this idea in mind concept 2.2 don't raise your hand too soon when i was learning how to code because of the pressure of deadlines and homework being due I oftentimes would raise my hand a lot sooner than I would have liked and I think that this actually hindered my quote quote programmer muscle from fully developing at the rate that it could have. When something is figured out for you, it is not the same as you solving it yourself. When you go through the motion and the growing pain of spending hours on line 47 and realize that it was a semicolon that was missing, the chances of you making that mistake again are very slim. And the reason why is because the next time you receive an error that's similar, your mind is going to develop a mental checklist of things to check as to what could go wrong. And because you've spent such a long time trying to debug this certain issue, that's gonna be engraved on your mental checklist. So let's say I'm coding and I spent an hour trying to figure out what was wrong with line 47, but now something else comes up and it's complaining about line 59. And the first thing that I think is, let me make sure that there's a semicolon on this line so that I don't have to spend another hour debugging or going through this issue, right? If you don't go through that process, through that pain, and somebody, your professor, your TA, just gave you that answer, it's gonna take you a lot longer to develop that mental checklist, meaning that you're going to develop your programmer muscle at a slower rate. Like Albert Einstein said, it's not that I'm so smart and I'm a genius. It's just that I stay with problems longer, and I don't think that there could be a better representation of that statement than learning how to code and figuring out different programming solutions. So when you're learning how to code, give yourself some time. And if there is a deadline, I understand that sometimes there can be a lot of pressure, but before asking for help, or before raising your hand, really ask yourself, have I done everything to my own ability to really understand or try to debug this issue before asking for help? And then, you know, if you really genuinely have, it's okay to ask for help, but it's really important that you push yourself to really make sure that you've done everything on your end to ensure that you genuinely don't get it or you genuinely are stuck. Data structures and algorithms. Now that you won't give up easy and I've given you a whole spiel on how to push yourself a little bit more before raising your hand for help, I think it's very important that I mention Data structures and algorithms are the gateway to landing a job within the tech industry. You will have to go through a series of technical interviews and these technical interviews consist of questions revolving around data structures and algorithms. I wish that when I was in college, I spent a lot more time focused on those two topics than I did. Whether you're self-teaching, boot camp, or you're an undergrad, make sure that you fit in an allotted time to go thoroughly through data structures and algorithms, genuinely understand them, 
I grouped data structures and algorithms into this section because data structures and algorithms are genuinely challenging and so I want you to push yourself when you decide to dedicate your time to actually learning them and like I said make sure you dedicate a good amount of time to thoroughly understanding them you're always a student the tech industry is constantly evolving and changing and because of this it is vital that you stay open to learning be comfortable with the fact that you're not always going to learn or know everything in fact my coding journey spans eight years and i am not close to knowing everything within tech and neither will you Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Get comfortable with not knowing everything. Get comfortable with asking questions, with staying curious, with wondering why something doesn't do what you think it does. Humility. There has been so many times when I know for a fact that I have done everything correctly and more so when I was beginning to code, I would get really angry with the computer. Now I don't because I, I kind of understand that it's likely something that I did. But when I was first learning how to code, I would swear up and down that I did everything correctly and I just couldn't understand what this error was because why isn't it working? I followed the steps exactly. When you feel like you're getting in this space, take a step back and just process the fact that the computer does not lie. It's not working because you did something wrong. And if you did something wrong, blaming the computer is not gonna help you figure out what that something is any quicker. So what I have really learned to do is when I feel like I'm getting in my head and not really able to process what's going on with a certain error, I take a step back and I genuinely read the error out loud because a lot of the time the air tells you exactly what is going on. I mean exactly. And when you're in a heightened state and you're just trying to figure something out quickly, you read the air and it makes zero sense. But take a step back and read the air because the computer talks to you and once you understand it, you're golden. 